Mr. Speaker, I think by now we all have seen the horrific images showing the bodies of Oscar Alberto Martinez Ramirez and his nearly two-year-old daughter, Valeria. They were taken on Monday as these Salvadoran migrants tried to cross the Rio Grande after leaving a Mexican migrant camp. Like so many others, they were exercising their legal right to seek asylum here in the United States. They wanted to be free from the violence, gangs, poverty, and inequality that is rampant in El Salvador, just as it does all across Central America. I visited El Salvador and I visited Honduras recently. And Mr. Speaker, uh, I saw the unbearable conditions with my own eyes. It is no wonder that organizations like the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime have said, have said this and other Central American countries are more dangerous than Afghanistan and only slightly better than Syria. Syria, Mr. Speaker, the site of the, an ongoing civil war. Let that sink in for a moment. But unfortunately, Alberto and Valeria didn't survive their journey. Alberto's wife, Tanya, was forced to watch in horror as a current washed her family away. I'm telling their story today because this is what migrants face as they risk their lives to come to this country. Not to transport drugs, not to commit crimes, as the President suggests, but to find refuge, raise their daughter in a safe place, and have a chance at building a better life, a life that they could only find in America. Isn't this what each of us wants for our own families? They came to present themselves at a legal port of entry and to seek legal asylum, as is their right under U.S. law. And they weren't the only ones to die. Just this past weekend, Border Patrol agents found four more bodies in the river west of Brownsville, Texas, three more young children and a young woman in her 20s. Every single week, people drown in the river, perish in the deserts, invisible and unknown. It wasn't too long ago that we celebrated how immigration made our country stronger, whether it was a Democratic or Republican administration. I'm reminded of President Reagan's final speech in office, where he said, and I quote, anybody from any corner of the world can come to America to live and become an American. This, I believe, is one of the most important sources of America's greatness, end quote. But Mr. Speaker, the Trump administration apparently has the complete opposite view of immigration. They don't celebrate it, they demonize it. Consider what may have, ha what may have happened to Oscar and his family if they did make it to our border. Forced to sleep on concrete floors with the lights on 24 hours a day, no soap, no medicine, maybe not even a toothbrush. Valeria separated from her parents, because that is what migrants are forced to endure at border facilities under this president. A physician who visited one recently said, and I quote, the conditions within which they are held could be, com could be compared to torture facilities, end quote. Mr. Speaker, when Lady Liberty encourages us to give her our poor huddled masses, I don't think she means so the administration could turn around and throw them in a cage. I don't think she lifts her torch so their legal play could be criminalized and crying children could be ripped from the arms of their parents. But that is what is happening under this president. And Mr. Speaker, it is sickening. It should, it should tear at the hearts of every single member of this House, whether they're Democrats or Republicans. This week, the House passed bipartisan emergency legislation to address this humanitarian crisis at the border. The Senate had its own ideas. So today, we are back with a compromise to get a bill quickly signed into law. This is a compromise that lives up to our core values and protects children and families. It adds critical protections for children that were included in the House version of the bill. That includes language to improve care for children by forcing influx facilities to comply with the Flores settlement and capping, and capping at 90 days the amount of time a child can spend in such a facility. We are also reducing funding for ICE while rejecting additional and unnecessary dollars for the Pentagon. This is a crisis, Mr. Speaker. We cannot treat compromise as though it's a dirty word. Not when, not when migrants are literally losing their lives in unsafe, unhealthy, and unsanitary conditions and children are being torn apart from their families. That is what is at stake here. The horrors at detention centers shouldn't get lost in the latest tweet-a-thon by the President, just as the plight of migrants shouldn't go unseen by the American people. This should shake our conscience and make clear the urgent need to act. So I urge all my colleagues to support this rule and the underlying bill. 
and let's send a message to the president that the, wor the, that the world that America let's send a message to the president and to the world that America is better than this. This is not who we are. What is happening at our border? And I would just say one final thing. In the compromise package today, that seems to bother so many people, are merely items that would protect the well-being of these children, that would provide more transparency. And for the life of me, I don't understand the controversy. I don't understand why we can't make the Senate bill better, why we can't do more for these children. I know my colleagues on the other side of the aisle feel, as we do, that what is happening is unacceptable. Let us strengthen that bill. Let us actually give a bill to the President that we all know will help these children. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time.